Around 8 months ago, I had the bright idea to start a Minecraft hardcore world. As a Minecraft expert with around 25,000 hours of playtime, I figured this would be the perfect challenge. I didn't expect to make it far, but 8 months later, I was able to survive 1,000 days. So, I had this completely original idea to create a movie out of all the episodes I've released. So, get ready for some fast progress, massive farms, and crazy projects. As always, the full world download is on my Patreon for supporters at pledge $5 or more. Enjoy the video! So first of all, let's get wood. And with this wood, let's make some basic tools. And now let's gather up stone for some stone tools and the furnace. And with these tools, let's get some more wood. Enemy spotted. Nope. Nope. Okay, so let's craft a bed and let's smelt up all this food. So while that food smelts up, let's go and collect some sugar cane. And let's sleep away our first night. Ooh, a shipwreck. Let's go and read it. Not bad. Oh, buried treasure. Oh, this is perfect. Oh, that's a drowned. So it should actually be right below here. Let's go. Oh, we've got the mother load. So with this arm, I'd actually like to make some new tools. Now I think we're set up pretty good. Okay, now it's time to go and look for somewhere to set up. Ah, plains biome. Nice. Oh, would you look at that in the distance? We've got ourselves a village. Right, well, I guess you all know what I'm going to do. Let's get raiding this place. Okay, this village has been raided. Let's work on a starter base. Okay, right, let's start preparing this area. Okay, this area will work nicely. Before we can start building, we need some building blocks. Okay, let's set up a tree farm. Oh, stop. Hello there. Oh, oh boy. Oh. <laughs> So I think it's now time for us to actually start work on a base. Okay, all the stuff is now underground. So now that we've got the start to the base, I think it's time we get this place filled with villagers. But for that we need a villager breeder. That's one, two, three, Please don't be dead. No! Oh, that's not good. Is that the silhouette of some Bodens? Yes, it is. We've got a village. Okay. Villager's been stolen. And there we have it. The villager breeder is online. So, I was just here crafting some stuff when a witch appeared. Oh no! Oh no, 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 no. Run away. So, with our starter base finished, I thought it was now time to start mining for resources. Alright, let's go mining for one hour and see how many resources we can get. So after one hour and 45 minutes, here are the spoils of our mining session. Let's get that stuff smelted up and harvest all these crops. Oh wow, perfect timing. <laughs> hey! Alright, there we go. We have traded away all that stuff and we got quite a decent amount of emeralds. And since we've got 35 levels, it's now time to do some enchanting. So I think let's enchant a diamond axe to start. One diamond axe. Oh my god, efficiency 4, unbreaking 3, and fortune 3. Oh, that's brilliant. Right, let's make some diamond armor. Fire protection, depth trader, unbreaking. It's not bad. And yeah, we'll go for that. Protection 3, Thorns, Unbreaking 3. You know what? I like this. We've finally got protection. It's a good work pick. And Fortune too. You know what? That's not bad. Yes! Mending. Brilliant. Okay, both those are repealed. Oh, looking to. You know what? I'm going to settle for that. Right, we're now good to go to the nether. Now this will be interesting to say the least. I think for simplicity's sake we're going to build it here. And boop, there we go. We now have access to the nether. Right, okay. So on day 71, let's go into the nether. 
Oh. Okay, well, never. What do you call this thing? A basalt dealer? Oh my. Hold up. Oh, no way. We've got a fortress. Oh, that's perfect. Right, let's block up this real quick. Okay, right, the portal is safe. I can't believe this spawn. This spawn is really, really good. Right, so the reason I came in here is because I want to go mining for ancient debris. So before we go into the fortress, which we'll need to do later anyway, let's get started on this. So we just returned from getting some ancient debris and we only got half as much as I need. We need 24 pieces. I'm not doing the bed method. Let's do the good old pick method instead. Oh no, run away. This is very bad. Get into the water. Get extra distance. Oh god. There's so many of them. Right, these other guys should be relatively easy to take out. Oh god, what about my villagers? I'm actually just going to let those guys die. Okay, there we go. Now let's hurry up and sleep. Oh, would you look at that? Here's all the drowned. Let's kill these guys. So returning from that mining trip, we only got 16 lousy pieces of ancient debris. So let's make some netherite tools and armour out of this stuff. Four pieces of netherite. And there we have it, we now have endgame gear. So next up, we need to prepare to go to the end, because yeah, we're going to be doing that today. So, we need blaze rods and ender perils, which the best place to get that is once again in the nether. Oh, I've got a few blazes here. Keep your distance. <laughs> Let's farm up, say, 16 rods. Okay, that should be enough blaze rods. Now we need to see about getting some ender perils. Oh, what? what? <laughs> he gave me ender perils right away. <laughs> that is awesome. Right, let's get... At least 16, we'll probably need more. Okay, so after doing a bunch of piglin battering, we ended up with 9 perils. That's not quite enough. Oh, would you look at that? There is an enderman. There's an enderman party over there. Okay, that's more than enough ender perils. Right, let's head home. So we've got all the eyes we need. It's now just a case of actually getting over there. So, let's go and find the stronghold. A little bit of lag there. Oh, okay, right. We're heading this way. Oh, right, we must be right on top of it, actually. Well, since it's in the water, let's see if we can find an easy way to get in. Oh, I found an entrance. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, we got a staircase. Ah, oh, we found it. Let's delete that. Oh, this is awesome. Well, we finally found the portal. So now I guess it's time to go and kill the Ender Dragon. Oh boy. Okay, right, yeah, we should be good to go. Let's go and kill this dragon. I don't like this spawn. Bridge over really fast. Okay, we have arrived. Now it should be fairly easy to destroy these crystals. Nope. 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 Oh, come on. Oh, he's diving. He's diving. Run away. Run, 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 run. Oh. Oh, no. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, no. <laughs> Why does it always fly low? What are you doing, dragon? Come down. <laughs> Why is it circling that high up? Get down here! <laughs> You're so close! Come on! Hey! We got him! The dragon's dead! <laughs> we did it! Let's go! Oh, 
Oh yes, look at all that experience. Mm. And we've got an end gateway. Awesome, we've just beat Minecraft Hardcore. <laughs> oh, I never thought I'd see the day. Now, let's head back into the overworld. We still have a few days left until day 100 and I think I want to build an Enderman experience farm. We can go and set up a nether portal to get there fast. Yes, it works. Okay, cool. Right, let's make this path safe. Cool. Right, this path is now safe. Awesome. So now we have a super fast way of getting to the end. No more travelling for long distances in the overworld. Let's start gathering resources for an Enderman farm. Ah, name tag! Oh, finally! Okay, we're now ready to build this Enderman farm. Let's put some lava down. So now, we do this. Now, let's do some ladders all the way back up. Okay, now we just need to go up to Y44. Okay, so we've just reached Y44. My <laughs> little finger is crushing the shift button right now. But since we are up here, we need to expand this platform. This is where the endermen are going to spawn. We basically need to bridge out 13 blocks and then make a giant square, and that will be the spawning platform. Well, that looks quite good. This should be enough space to do the endermen. Oh, endermen, we got it. Okay, what if we can do something cheeky where we place this and we get this guy to walk into it? Hey, there we go. So we've got the hole ready, all we need to do is run and push. Aha! And we're just going to place two of those. Right, this thing is now ready to go. Look, see, they're all getting angry. Okay, so we're ready to test this. These guys should all be a one-hit kill, so if I do this... Yeah. And yeah, there we go. We've done a first proper farm of the series. Now, since we have a good source of experience, what we should really be doing it's doing an enchanting in the end itself. Oh, and that's something I forgot. Since we've actually done this, let's have the egg move somewhere. Oh, there we go. Just put a torch bolt like this and break the block. Awesome. Let's combine that with this. 20 levels, damn. Oh, you, you shouldn't be here. Okay, that's Pro 3. Okay, so at this stage we've basically run out of lapis, which means we can't do any more enchanting. So with that, we say goodbye to this project, it's been fun, and uh, we'll be back soon. Now we just need to get over here without dying. Alright, so since we're almost finished for this episode, I think we should get caught up on harvesting all of our crops, because it's been a little while since we did this. And there we go. That's where you survive 100 days in Hardcore Minecraft. I plan on doing a mega build inside the end, but the island is in the way, so I'm going to remove the entire end island in survival Minecraft. This took 90 hours to make, so if you enjoy it, please subscribe. Enough of that, let's begin. First of all, we need an elytra. Since we're going to be removing the island, going into the end will be a death sentence. So let's make use of the gateways we generated last time to go out into the outer end to find in cities. So in returning from that end busting session, we got two elytras. That's pretty good, I'm happy with that, we've got a backup here. And we've got all this other additional gear. And now let's get these both enchanted. So now that we've got the ability to fly, we need the fuel in order to fly. Which we don't currently have. So in order to make fuel, we need rockets. And guess what? We can build a farm for it. So let's do that. Let's build a creeper farm. So now that we've got this creeper farm finished, we need to light up the island to make sure this thing works perfectly. Alright, cool. So now all we need to do is get up to the AFK spot. And there we go. Right. Hey, we did it. Oh, let's go. 
So now it's time to go AFK to get all of the gunpowder we need to start flying. And we're back from our AFK session. Let's see how much gunpowder we got. Ah, oh, that's, that's not good. That's not good at all. Okay, so I guess we need to light up a whole bunch more. Okay, so we have lit up the area. So hopefully we don't have a repeat of the last AFK session. So let's test this again for one hour and hopefully that will fix the issues we've had. Okay, let's go and check how much gunpowder we got. Okay, yeah, that is a lot of mobs. <laughs> okay, that is a lot better than last time. Almost 14 stacks of gunpowder. Okay, there we go, there is some rockets to get started on this project. And there we have it folks, we now have the ability to fly. Okay, let's head into the nether and start grinding out the stuff we need to respawn the dragon. Nice. Okay, we've nearly finished gathering all the materials we need. Okay, we are now ready to go and respawn and kill the ender dragon 20 times. This is going to be a long one. And get this guy respawned. One, two, three, four, five. I just killed the dragon five times. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I did it all again. Hey, there we go. That is our final dragon. We've killed it. We've killed the dragon 20 times. So I just went and double checked and all 20 gateways are in position. So before we start mining these obsidian pillars all the way down, we need to remove all of this excess bedrock. Oh my god. We had one piece of TNT remaining. Oh, I'm so lucky. All the pieces of bedrock have been removed. So now we can start removing these obsidian pillars. Okay, no. That's gonna take too long. Let's work towards getting a beacon. Oh, that was a skull. Oh god, oh no no. That's close. That's too close. Half a heart. Oh, that's too close for comfort. Oh, third skull. Okay, we're well, now ready to fight the weather. Hello there. Hey, he's dead. Awesome, let's make a beacon. To start off, let's set up the beacon. Alright, well I guess it's now time to start mining away these pillars. Oh god, this is going to take a while. And it did. I decided to focus on the smaller pillars first, as it only took an hour or so to do each of those. The slightly bigger pillars, they took a little bit longer. So I've been working away here in the end and we've removed all the little pillars and all of the slightly bigger pillars, leaving us with these four mega obsidian pillars. I've already been at this project for about 10 hours, meaning we still have at least another 20 hours to go. And there we have it. After removing 40,000 pieces of obsidian, we have cleared all of the end pillars from this island. So before we can start removing the end island, we need to gather a few materials, one of which being slime. And the best way to get slime is by making a slime farm, which we're going to need this beacon for. So somewhere in our starter island, we have a slime chunk. So Let's clear it out. So after spending a ridiculous amount of time, we are finally down at the bottom of the world, which is perfect for slime spawning, but we're missing one key feature. We need to actually build the slime farm. This should be a fairly easy process. Oh hello, our first slime. Awesome, right, so the slime farm is now 100% finished, but we still aren't getting many slime balls. This means we need to light up a massive area of caves. 
So now that we've done all the cave lighting, we can now do a proper air K test to get all of the slime we need. So after a bunch of AFK, we now have plenty of slime for this project. So let's start crafting everything we need. And with our sugar box of materials put together, we can now go into the end and finally start constructing this machine. And there we have it. The TNT bombing system is finished, so it's now time to start bombing out this end island. But I'm not safe here, I need to go and stand somewhere safe. So we've got ourselves an AFK platform way above the end island, so now it's time to start destroying this thing. Okay, so sadly we weren't able to destroy the entire end island in one pass because our TNT bombers were a little bit too high up in the world. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go flying around destroying the rest of the island by hand. This is going to take a while. And there we have it. We have now removed the entire end island in Hardcore Minecraft. But we're not quite finished just yet. We still have a few things here to remove, one being this long dirt path that I used to activate the machine while it was running, and our bombing machine. Oh, and another thing, we need to make sure we actually get all of our items back, because this thing is incredibly expensive. So, let's do it. And there we have it, we've finished the first mega project of this hardcore world. What would you build here? Let me know by leaving a comment. Now, after spending god knows how many hours in here, it's finally time to return to the overworld. So yeah, we've got a bunch of blocks and items now, and we don't have anywhere to store them, so next time we're definitely going to be making a story system of some sorts. And of course we're going to be doing it on a mega scale. Today we turn this overgrown jungle into a hub for all the things you can do with villagers in the game. To do this, I will need a shulker farm, an iron farm, a villager breeder, and so much more. Let's begin. Alrighty, so we need to gather a hell of a lot of materials for this first project. Shulker farms be like that. Okay, we should now have all the resources we need for this project. Now we can begin our journey to collect shulkers from the end. So arriving in the end, we have one major problem. We no longer have an end island. So first things first, we need to set up a rail path from the obsidian platform to the end gateway. Boom, there we go. The setup over here, where the end island used to be, is now ready to go. So all we gotta do now is pick one of these portals to go through, and then we need to go and find an end city. Okay, so I've actually spent a bunch of time looking for end city close to one of these portals, and it's took me a little while, but I finally found one. Let's set up a rail line and get in the shulkers over here first. Do a little something like this, and then, there we go. Aha! Genius! Uh, that's not right. <laughs> no! No, 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 no. Oh my god. What is that guy doing? Okay, let's try this again. Right, you're now having trouble, so all we need to do now is place this from the main cart and fuel the thing. Aha! It's through the portal. Let's go through it. No! Oh no! Oh, that's super annoying. No. So after this attempt, I gave it one more try and managed to get a shulker through to the centre of the end successfully. And now that we have the shulker really close to the portal, it should just be a case of getting them back in the minecart and over to the portal itself. Oh no, <laughs> Enderman goes flying. <laughs> Aha. 
Right, so we've got the shulker in place. All we need to do now is press this button and he's went through into the overworld. And there we go. We've actually moved our first shulker and we've made it all nice and safe. Now we need to go and move as many more as we can possibly get. It then took another 15 minutes to move the others. We actually got all three shulkers into the overworld. This is fantastic. So we just finished gathering all the resources we need for the shulker farm. We have so many shulkers of materials right now, but we're going to need all of them. And the best place for this is over in our spawn chunks. So with all that resource gathering out of the way, let's build the shulker farm. And there we have it, the shulker farm is complete. Now we just need to get one of these guys inside the farm. So now all we should take off to do is do something a little bit like this, and we're off. Okay, so this guy is now in here. That is perfect. Now it's a good time to test this farm. So as you can see, this farm has already broken. It has however created quite a few shulkers. The reason this farm isn't currently working is because we ran out of iron. And I'm not mining for more of that, so let's set up an iron farm. So the iron farm is basically finished apart from a few things. One, we need the villagers to actually populate this thing and to produce iron. And two, we need one hostile mob. Normally people use zombies because they're really easy to get. I'm not normal. Instead, we're going to be using pillagers, which I basically need to wait around for a patrol to show up. This is going to take some time. I've been waiting for these guys for four hours and they're finally here. Let's capture a few. Aha, <laughs> you're trapped. Now we just need to get this guy to break his bow. Oh my god, it's broken, finally. Okay, right, now we need to get this guy all the way up there. Aha. So let's move this guy. Okay, he's in the right position. So let's get you in here. Let's get you in. Aha, hello. <laughs> and there we go, this guy's now in place. <laughs> now we can remove all of this. Now we just need to get all the villagers. Let's take you over to the iron farm. Hey. Okay, this really didn't take long at all. Let's get all of these guys in place. And there we go, the last of the villagers is in place. Now we can remove all the scaffolding, get this farm finished. And with the setting of the sun, this commemorates the completion of our first ever iron farm in this hardcore world. Now, we'll get the fun bit. Let's give this thing a proper test. Okay, so our one hour AFK session is up. We got quite a bit of iron throughout all of these chests. Okay, so I've sorted all the iron out and here it is. That is quite a decent amount. That's three stacks of iron blocks, nearly four stacks. This means we can fully resupply our beacon because we use the beacon base for that shulker farm. And we should also have enough iron to get all of the minecarts crafted so that we can use the shulker farm at full capacity. All right, so looking in here, you can see we've filled all of these silos with minecarts. Well, most of them. This last one here, we didn't quite have enough iron for that. So I'm just going to leave this iron farm running for the rest of the episode. Basically, it's going to generate iron for the rest of the episode because it's in these spawn chunks, meaning it is constantly loaded. So this finally means we can actually turn this farm on. So let me just come over here real quick. Flick the switch. So that wasn't as easy as I thought. So let's grab a minecart. Okay, it's not this platform, so it should be the next. Oh god, oh no no. That's a, that's a lot of shockers. Okay, this one will do. Let's take this guy. Teleports down there, that's good. Goes into that minecart. So he should be taken over here. Okay, so while this farm is running, I think we should start work on doing some more villager things. So I want a dedicated area of the world that has all of our villager stuff in one place. That includes trading. That means of course we will be removing the villagers in this area. However, this area we can't have it nearby this region because these are the spawn chunks and we don't want this loaded all the time. So let's go exploring for a decent area. Okay, so I think I found the region. We have ourselves a very big jungle biome. Building in jungles is fun, but there's one thing we need to tackle first. Let's remove all of the trees in the area. So we got all that jungle cleared and we got several shulker boxes of wood. We'll be making use of those very soon. Now we need to dig all this down to Y40. And there we go, the hole has been dug out. This took a really long time. In fact, we're now on day 651. I was planning having this video finished by then. Now that that's out of the way, we need to decorate this area. So 
let's go and gather all the resources we need. So we have now finished gathering all the materials for this project in this chest. Let's move it all over to the project area. Alright, there we go. Now that we've brought all the resources over to this area, now is the time to decorate this and bring it to its final form. And there we have it, this area is complete. And you know what, it didn't even take that long to do this. The longest part was actually making all of that concrete. That was kind of expensive. So a few bits of information about this area, so we've built this and if we check our coordinates, Y40, so slimes can spawn. We do however get a lot of patrols which is kind of interesting. Now my idea is this is meant to be the central hub for all of our villager needs in the world. Our villager needs being trading, farming, iron farms and last but not least raid farms and stuff like that. So that's why we've got these four doorways on each of the walls. Now in order to do all of these different projects we need villagers but more importantly we need food because villagers require food to breed and then it saves me harvesting food whenever I need to eat as well. So what I'm thinking is we build some automatic crop farms. Alright, so this farm is now complete. The only thing we need now is villagers to populate the thing. Why are you being difficult? Ah, hello. <laughs> you want me to do that. And away you go. Now we wait. Hey, we got our first baby. And after a bunch of breeding, here's all the villagers we need for this crop farm. And... And there we go, the crop farm is done. And we're producing carrots. Okay, that's really good. Now let's get the storage system in place. And with the storage being finished, we've sealed up this wall, meaning this crop farm project is done. I have, however, left space in the back in case we ever want to upgrade this thing. So yeah, I put the carrots we had in storage in here along with all the carrots that are being generated while we're working on this thing. And we're just going to leave it running because we're going to need a lot of these carrots in just a moment. So now that we've got the crop farm project done it's time to move to the opposite side of this area here because over here I want to set up an area for trading. In order to trade with villagers we need a lot of villagers to begin with so we also need a villager breeder. We set up a really basic one out here to get enough villagers for that thing but this won't do. So let's begin preparing this area. And there we go, we're one step closer to finishing this villager area project. You may be wondering what we actually built here, because you know a lot of this stuff is underground and wasn't actually visible in the time lapse. So for starters we have my own custom made villager breeder. You should totally use this villager breeder design, no one else's. Link in the description by the way. Your baby villagers go below the ground and then end up in this holding cell. This design was inspired by the friend of the channel Not Not Brock. He had one very similar to this in his hardcore world. It was as basically identical apart from the back system there. The idea is we can push this button, the villagers are then forced into that area at the back where a minecart will then go and pick them up. And if you're wondering, this is what the rail is like in the back here. Once the villagers are in minecarts, they come through the rail system and end up here where we get to choose their profession. And the best bit about this system is we can actually call new villagers from this button right here. So when we press this button, the villagers are sent off, they fall down and they follow the rail network down below the floor ending up here. The idea is right that there's meant to be a zombie that converts the villager into a zombie villager where we can then send him away to wherever we need. So we've got two doors here. This one leads to nothing, that's where the trading area is going to be. However this one leads to a zombie villager conversion area. This design was directly inspired by the one flip designed. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. This is a fantastic thing it makes converting zombie villagers really easily. This has a capacity of eight and it should only require two splash portions of weakness to do the full eight. So that's pretty good. However, you may be noticing we can't really use this system until we have a zombie. Now fortunately all we should really need to do is make a little hole in here and as you can see this area isn't lit up at all. This is very dangerous actually. Okay let's look around for a zombie. Hi, I picked it up. Okay. Aha. Okay he's in place. This thing is now ready to go. Okay so before we can begin trading with these guys we need to convert them back and forth to zombie villagers and then back again. That requires a lot of golden apples, which we have no one enough gold for. But not to worry, I have a plan. So my plan for getting lots of easy gold without building a gold farm is to raid desert temples and 
portal ruins. And the best bit about it, these things have golden apples in them. So let's go. Ah. Oh my god. <laughs> no way. <laughs> An enchanted golden apple in our first one. Wow. Oh that's awesome. What do you have? Oh my god, another one. Oh that's amazing. And after going through all those portal runes, this is all the stuff I got. And the best bit about it was we got two enchanted golden apples. That wasn't even what I was looking for, but I'll happily take them. Which, speaking of, let's put them away for safekeeping. Today we worked towards generating an infinite amount of gold, which we use for many different things, including villager trading and in-game food. To do this, I'm going to need an insane gold farm and a piglin trader. Let's get into it. Okay, so to start working this gold farm, we need to access the nether roof. But first, I need some building blocks. Okay, right, this is going to be very dangerous. So let's just go up here. And let's pillar up. This is so dangerous. Ah. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now we need to find part of this roof that's accessible. Ah, found you. Now we just need to glitch through. However, before we do that, we should probably go and get the materials we need so that we can break the bedrock once we're on top. Okay, so ready to glitch through the bedrock. First of all, let's take note of these coordinates. I'm just going to take a little screenshot. And now, it should just be a case of throwing an ender pearl straight through. And there we go. This used to be a lot harder. Also, I appear to be stuck in the floor. Let's just, there we go. Place this. And there we go. So what we need to do is, I'll go under here and then I'll activate this. And then we need to try and spam click that corner. Okay. Okay, let's go. Was that successful already, what? Oh my god, no way, that was the first attempt. <laughs> I panicked it, I almost mistimed it, but wow, okay. Awesome. So now that we've got easy access to the nether roof, what we need to do is we need to go down and make this ladder safe. Because we're going to be transporting a lot of resources up here. Okay, this is now perfectly safe. However, I think in order to make this a little bit faster to get down, I'm going to put some slime blocks all the way at the bottom. Alright, now let's test this. Ah, works perfectly. So now that this area is made 100% safe, I'd be more than happy to start collecting resources for this gold farm. We need so much stuff. All the resources for this project have been collected. Why do all my projects require so many materials? Let's move these over to the nether. So now that we've got all the resources, we need to actually find the perfect area for this up here. Unfortunately, we can't use this biome. Okay, so this block right here marks the perfect location for this gold farm. Now we just need to go high up in the world. Let's get started. Okay, this height should be pretty good. Let's build a little area we can use for storage. All right. Empty the inventory and remove this pillar. Okay, sweet, so this is what the storage system for the gold farm is gonna be. So let's get that in place first. Awesome, the storage is in place. Now let's move up to the AFK area. Let's get the four rails in place. And the hopper minecarts to go with them. Then we need to break the rails. Place a magma block here. Two temporary blocks. Remove one. Replace it with a piston and then power the thing. Now we need to do that for the other three sides. Awesome, there we go. Now we can place the final glass blocks. Long ones removing the scaffolding. Put a few more temporary blocks down, make a glass ring, remove those blocks, and then place slabs. So in these sections, we need 24 minecarts in each bit. These will kill the piglins using entity cramming. 
Okay, that's one sale done. If I fall in here, I will die. Better not fall in then. And there we go. The four kill chambers are finished. Okay, so next up, let's get some carpets on here. And using these carpets as a guide, we're going to place some trap doors and we're going to make these six tall. Then, open all of them. We'll then continue these handles going up. And then we build the back wall. Bring it out, like so. And then, have a few stilts. And this will funnel the piglins into the kill system. Now we just need to do the same on all four sides. Oh, there we go. Next up, let's fill in this room. And then on each corner, we're going to come up. Make a full L like so. And then with our snow wheels here, we're going to make them five tall. So one, two, three, four, five. And then the rest of the wall up will be red glass. And then we need to repeat this on the other corners. And there's our AFK spot almost done. The only thing missing is the AFK spot, which I've done too high. So remove that and there we go. So we've done the hard part. Now we need to go outside and place an insane amount of glass and magma blocks. So for this part of the world, we need to leave the safety of the AFK room and we need to place a whole bunch of glass in a ring. All right, so I'm thinking we come out 20 blocks from this central location. Now we need to connect all four of these. All right, there's a ring. Now we get to fill all of this in. So this central platform is now complete. Now we get the fun job of making another one. However, this one is made out of magma blocks, which we can't walk on whatsoever. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing we did with this one. I'll do the outer border first before we fill them in. That's the first ring done. Let's do it for the other two spawning layers. Okay, so it took a whole minute, but we finally got all of these rings in place. So right now, we're going to take out all this glass and we're going to set up a system on this top platform to stop gas from spawning. Okay, our anti-gas system is now in place, meaning we won't have any more close calls. And since we have all of that done, it means we're almost finished this project. Now, we just need to finish these spawn platforms. So I think we just placed something like 5,000 magma blocks to get this thing done. That was a lot, but as you can see, it's almost working perfectly. Plenty of these zombie piglins are spawning, which is pretty good. Now before we can actually use this farm, there's a few other things we need to do. To start, we're going to need to get some trap doors and place them in some of these upper layers. Okay, all the trap doors are in place, being this central part of the farm is online. Now we need to deal with the piglins that need to go on the four corners. Only issue is, I don't have any name tags. So we're going to have to pop back into the old road to see about getting some from some villagers. So I've been scratching my very bald head a little bit because I prepared some name tags for this episode, but they're nowhere to be found. So I looked around and then I finally looked at my ender chest and look at this, they're in this shocker box. Come to me. And yeah, you should all do what those name tags say by the way. Okay, right, you come here. Let's get you over here. Awesome. Name you. There you go. Awesome. Okay, we've got one more. And there we go. The last guy is in place. Now we can remove this dot. We can remove the staircase. And then last but not least, we can remove the staircase and the AFK section. And there we have it. The gold farm is online. One thing I should mention, this design was done by a mango. Link to that in the description. Okay, this is where the fun begins. Now that we've finished this farm, let's do an AFK test for one hour. So there we go, our one hour AFK test is up. We've got so many levels, oh my god. So if we just pop down here real quick. Oh boy, these chests are a mess. Right, I'm going to have to go and empty all of these and sort out all the gold we've collected. And after sorting through all those chests, we ended up with this much gold. For only an hour, that's a pretty good amount actually. And for the sake of tidiness, I think I'm going to take all of this, craft it into gold blocks, and I'll put them back in here for later on. Okay, so I don't want to ever do that again. 
That took a while, I had to throw out like 900 golden salts. Like, that's not great. So I think what the plan is, is we're going to tear out this current story system and make something a little more automated. And there we go, the story system for this gold farm is complete. We've got more stories than we'll ever need for this farm. We've even got a gold trim because apparently gold is now easy to come by. So a few things worth mentioning, we have an impulse SV item sorter, quite a few of them actually. We then have an ethyl hopper clock which hooks up to the item transportation system up here. This system funnels all the items in one place and then bounces them about because unfortunately we can't use water in the nether. Now I want to give this system a proper test so what I've done is all the gold we've collected so far, I've crafted it into blocks and we're keeping it in here so we have just over a stack. I think what we should do is we should probably go in AFK for say another hour to make sure this system properly works. So I think it's fair to say that AFK session was successful. This storage system works perfectly, however all these chests were a bit overkill. And I've just went around and did a quick check and everything seems to work perfectly so we don't need to fix anything. So now that we have all of this gold, I want to do something very special. It's finally time to upgrade our food source. So up until now I've been living purely on baked potatoes. And I mean, these are fine for the early game, however we're no longer in the early game. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a shulker box of carrots, pick up that shulker, we then take some gold, and then we craft both of these into the best food source in the game, and turn the rest of these into golden carrots. And there we go, there's a full shulker box of them. Oh my god I went through so much gold, time to do some more AFKing. It's like, yeah no we're not doing that, we've already done enough AFKing at this thing today. So I actually have another thing in mind for all of this gold, and no we're not crafting it into something. Basically, I want some Soul Speed 3 books. Soul Speed 3 allows you to travel super fast while walking on Soul Sand. Basically, it allows for slightly faster travel in the Nether or in the Overworld wherever you decide to use it. And at one point fairly soon, I want to build a Nether Hub, and this is going to use a bunch of Soul Sand in the different pathways. So we can get this by doing a bunch of Piglin Barter. So in order to build this Piglin Barter, we need to find the perfect biome. This biome being a crimson forest. Okay, I think this spot should do nicely. But before we can build anything, let's go and gather the resources we need. And there's all the resources we need for this Peglin Barra. Okay, this area should work nicely. Now, let's build this thing. Okay, this thing should now be ready to go. So in order to start using this thing, we need to get up to the roof. We should now be right above where we just were. Now we need to pillar up to Y247. Okay, there we go. Let's make a little platform. Now we can remove this dark pillar. Place that, and then take this all the way down to bedrock. And now we need to AFK to spawn a bunch of piglins. Okay, I've been AFK for a while. That should be long enough. So as you can see, we've got a bunch of piglins in place. Now before I go in to make the fixes I need to make, I'm going to take off my boots and put on some golden boots instead. That way these guys shouldn't attack. So first of all, I'm going to remove this observer. I need to check. Yeah, okay, all the carved pumpkins are gone. That's how these guys aren't despawning. Okay, so next up I'm just going to place glass there and then I'm going to close this, meaning no more of these guys can come through. Okay, so next up let's close this right here and we're going to push these guys to make sure they aren't occupying the space. Oh, and I got my observer back, that's cool. going to need a slab and place it right there. That doesn't look right. I think I need, it needs to be a top slab. Do something like this and there we go. Now we should be able to remove this. Awesome. Remove that as well. Then we place a trap door here and another one right here. And then we open both of them. But I'm going to close this one because this one's where we're actually going to stand. We're going to get some iron bars ready. Then we're going to pop out back, remove one block here and then another one right here. And then we're going to place these guys in. And there you go, this thing is ready to go. One thing I should mention, this design was done by ANX04, link in the description. Now in order to properly test this, we need gold. Which, if I remember correctly, we don't have anyone near enough of, so I'm going to have to go and do a bunch more AFKing. Okay, so I did a quick 3 hour AFK session to get all the gold we're going to need. Probably best to craft all that up in the blocks. Okay, so before we can start using this gold to trade with these piglins, there's one more thing we need to do. We need to populate this shulker box loader with shulker boxes. And okay, this thing is finished. Now let's do this, let's put our boots back on, empty our inventory, make a fill and drain trees worth of gold, and throw it all down the back here. Now we do this, pop on down, 
open this up and basically put all the items in this shulker box until it's full and then just keep on doing it. And from that full inventory is worth of gold. This is how many boxes of shulkers of loot we ended up getting. Now let's sort all of them. And there we go. That's how many shulkers of materials we have after sorting everything out. Look at how many Soul Speed 3 books we've got. Let's attach these to our boots. So I've just realised that we already had Soul Speed 3. <laughs> that must have been from our first episode. Well, the first time we went through the nether that is. Oh my god, why didn't I check this before? You know what? It's fine. It, it, it's, it's fine, we just have spares now. Alright, let's put this shocker box away. Today I'm going to be working on an insanely overpowered project where I can turn one stick into any enchanted book in Hardcore Minecraft. Starting with my small cramped villager trading hall and replacing it with the ultimate villager trading hall. Let's get into it. So in order to do the villager trading project which is just behind this door, we're going to need a lot of resources. And this is how much we're going to need. Now this looks like a lot but don't panic, we've already gathered most of this from clearing out the hole needed for the villager area. Which these resources are in these shocker boxes and barrels. So we've already got three shocker boxes of stuff. But we're going to need a lot more. Now I made the silly mistake of choosing Deep Slate as one of the main accent blocks. I don't have much Deep Slate, however unfortunately, we have a mine, which goes all the way down to Deep Slate. So let's gather up what we need. There we go. So that should be most of the resources we need for this project. But we're still missing one key resource. We need a large amount of dark oak. Now looking at my storage, as you can see, we don't have any. So we're going to have to locate a dark oak forest. And after a bit of exploration, we've found a large dark oak forest. And since I want to do this fast, let's tear down this entire place. Okay, I think that should be more than enough dark oak. Let's head back to base. Now that we have all the resources, let's move these over to the villager area. And there we go. All the resources have been transported over. Having shocker boxes make this so easy. Okay, and here we go. The space has been cleared and oh, would you look at that, we have some guests. Now, if you don't want to end up like those skeletons, you better like and subscribe or else. You should probably light this place up. Okay, so the general idea is I want rooms branching off of this central corridor which will store each of the different villager types. And we have a lot of rooms to do. However, before we get to do that, I'd like to decorate this area first. Cue the time lapse. Okay, now we're feeling it. Let's fill in the walls. And would you look at that? Ah, oh, this is going to be perfect. So I've got these doorways on each side of the corridor, which currently lead to absolutely nothing. This is where we're going to be doing our villager trading, but this won't do. So let's clear enough space to get some villagers in here. Okay, that looks very nice, but I think we need to decorate this place. And there we go. This room has been completed. This room makes heavy use of dark oak, which might be my new favourite texture, along with the deep slate we mined earlier. This design was inspired by a friend of mine, Brock. He did something similar in his hardcore series, which you should totally check out. Now, let's do the rest of them. But first, let's go and repair our tools. And with our tools being fully repaired, let's do this. After placing blocks for several hours, each of these rooms has been completed. But why do we have as many? The reason we have as many rooms is because I want to be able to trade with every type of villager in the game, and there are many different professions. Each profession provides certain resources, like bottles of enchanting, emeralds, and enchanted books, which is why rooms like this are much bigger than the others. This is where the librarians will be. However, in order to get all of those librarians and other villagers, there's a few things we need to do first. So first of all, we need to make use of this setup to set the profession of the villagers send them down here to be turned into zombie and then through here to be cured over and over again. In order to do that we're going to need two things, golden apples which we already have a massive supply of and potions, mainly potions of weakness. Now we have the brune stands for them already here but we don't have anything else. So let's go and get the necessary resources.
Oh boy, that's a lot of weakness potions right there. We also partially filled this chest, but you can see it's partially empty. That's because I already went ahead and put down some dispensers with some weakness potions in here, meaning that we can now test this system. Okay, so at this point we're actually ready to get this whole system a test, so let's get some villagers prepped and press this button to request a villager. Why, hello. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up some fletchers first. Okay, let's place down the fletcher workstation, wait for him to get his job. Okay, so now that he has a job, let's do a trade. One emerald, please. And now the last done it's locked in his trades, meaning we can send this guy away. Down here. Alright, there we go. It's now been converted. So now we'll be able to move this villager on the conversion area. And there we go. This guy's now finally in place. We need to fill this entire area. Let's get another seven zombie villagers. Alright, there's eight zombie villagers. So now all we need to do is do a splash and then... There we go. Now we need to wait for these guys to cure up. Alright, all of these villagers are cured. But yeah, as you can see, all of these trades are now a bit cheaper. So after converting and curing these villagers five times, we've finally got the trades down to one stick per emerald. That is crazy cheap. And now we get to put them into the rooms we decorated before. However, in order to do that, we're going to need to dig a tunnel. Okay, that tunnel should work. And now we can send these villagers on their way. Okay, now we need to get this villager out of this. Get a water bucket. And there you go, you're trapped. And there we go. We can now trade with this villager. Now we need to do that another seven times. And there we go. All eight of these fletchers are in place. And I have an idea. I'm going to give this a test run. Now if you remember, the trades are at one stick per emerald. So keep that number in mind. Because I've got a bunch of sticks here. And I've got an entire shocker box of wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert all of this wood into emeralds. So we're doing some trading stuff and we're left with this much wood. Now I was originally going to trade all that wood for emeralds, but if we look in here, yeah, I've already got an insane amount. So now that we've got all of these fletchers in place, we can move on to the other villager types. Okay, so we're really low on apples, so we're going to focus on getting some farmer villagers. Okay, yeah, that'll work. Now comes the fun part, and we need to do the same seven more times. Okay, all these farmers are ready to go. Okay, let's send you to the room and the workstation. So you're going to need that. Now we need to do that all over again. Now that we've got these farmers into position, we're faced with another issue. They don't have access to the apple tree straight away. But not to worry, all we need to do is level these villagers up one time. That shouldn't take long. Alright, so we've leveled up most of these villagers by one level, and quite a lot of them have the apple trade, but apple shortage is no longer a problem. So now that the apples are dealt with, we need a large supply of gold. So I went and they've kept the gold farm for a few hours. So with all this gold, we can start work on getting the other villagers in place. So my plan is we're going to do everything apart from the librarians because they're going to take quite a while to do. So now that the rest of this trading hall is filled, we get the fun task of filling up the librarian area. So let's get to it. Oh my god, the second village we got efficiency 5. That's insane. Infinity, that's pretty good. Respiration 3, I'm gonna need that for all my helmets. Breaking 3, power 5, aqua affinity, channel, feather falling 4, and let's kill these guys a bunch of times. Alright, so I've killed these villagers twice so far and I've got their trades down to one emerald per book. Well, all of them except this one. This one is still quite expensive. And this is for the efficiency 5 trade. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move the other villagers into the trading hall and I'm going to leave that guy there for the next round of curing attempts. Okay so I've got all the librarians we've done so far into position and they're spread out a little bit because I'm sorting these villagers by category. So on the left here we've got all of our tools and weapon trades and on the right everything to do with armour. And then with the space we have left we'll fill them up as we need. And speaking of filling these up, that's what I'm doing next. Let's just say this is going to be a lot of fun and it's going to take a lot of time. So after several long hours we finally have this trading hall filled up. Well everything apart from these three places right here. I'm going to save these for future enchantments. So now that we have this trading hall complete, I actually want to make use of it. So we have all of these emeralds to play with, plus the potential of making a lot more. And we have many villages, so let's put both of them together. Now up until now, these are the only tools I've ever had in this world. But as you can imagine, I like doing big projects, which means one set of tools simply won't work. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to make use of our toolsmiths in here to trade for enchanted diamond pickaxes. And then we take these pickaxes and make them full on work picks. In order to do that, we're going to need a few shocker boxes which I think five shocker boxes should do. Now before we can get these diamond tools we have a bit of an issue. We're going to have to level all of our toolsmiths all the way up to max level which will require emeralds and a bottle of iron. Good thing I've got an iron fire. 
That only took about 20 minutes and we managed to get all of these villagers leveled up to master level, giving us the diamond pickaxe trade. Let's fill up a shocker box. So I've got a bit of a dilemma. These diamond pickaxes are all enchanted, so we can't really apply many more enchantments, but there's a simple solution. We take these pickaxes through here and use these grindstones to remove the enchantments. Now that's much better. Now we need to do the same for unbreaking, efficiency, mending and simple touch books. Now that's an insane amount of enchanted books. Before we make use of these, I'm going to empty my inventory. I'm going to pick these up. And now we're going to make our way over to the gold farm because let's just say I don't have anyone enough experience for this. And I have 500 levels right now. Okay, so I've crafted this up a bunch of anvils and I don't know if 15 is going to be enough. Hopefully it will be. So yeah, my process is essentially I'm going to take one pick out at a time, take out all of the books we need. So I'm going to go with the efficiency five first. We're going to go in order of the enchantment level and unbreaking three. And then we're going to do is we're actually going to add our silk touch and mending books together. And then we do this and then that way in the long run, the amount of XP we use will be cheaper. And there we go. I now need to do that another 26 times, which as you can imagine, is going to take a long time. We well, were so close to finishing, we only had three pickaxes left, but we ran out of levels. Guess I'm good enough to get some more. Okay, that should be more than enough levels. Let's get these three final tools enchanted. That wasn't anywhere near enough experience, but we've got all of these pickaxes enchanted now. Let me do a quick clean up here. Awesome, now let's take our pickaxes and head home. And since we decided to return the base, I made the decision to clear out our ender chest and sort things out a little bit. So now we have our shulker box of pickaxes here, followed by our food and our iron. And you may be wondering where the rocket shulker box is. I'm carrying that on my all tens, which you can see right here. We are running a bit low on rockets but I'll be dealing with that at some point in the future. Now the other reason why I came back here is we have a bunch of diamonds in storage because I had to go mining a few times and I was going to fortune these up but I came to a realisation. You see this diamond pick I'm holding? It's only fortune 2. We can do much better than that. Okay let's buy a fortune 3 book, place one of these anvils and apply fortune 3 to our pickaxe. Sweet. Now our other tools could probably do with being modified as well but they're not really all that important so I'm just going to leave them as is for now. Oh and when I was flying over here I I spotted something really weird. I think an Enderman has been here. These guys are very annoying. And from that stack and 20 diamonds, we got three stacks of diamonds in return. I don't even know why I'm bothering fortuning these things up because it's not as if I'm using them for anything. 21 blocks of diamonds, that's not bad. Okay, so now that we've got those diamonds dealt with, there's something else I'd like to address. We're almost completely out of rockets. Normally this wouldn't be an issue, but I have a lot of big projects coming up and a lot of these projects will involve flying. So to make our rockets, we're going to need a bunch of sugarcane. Alright, let's put that sugarcane away in here and we'll craft it into paper later on. So next up we need to make use of this creeper farm, which speaking of, let's see how much gunpowder I have. Basically nothing. Oh, that's not good. Also, why are we getting so many normal mob drops in this? Ah wait, I know why. We never finished putting the trapdoors in up there. There we go. That's all fixed. Now we can get all the gunpowder we need. Alright, so I've been AFK for a really good while and we now have a lot of gunpowder. Hold on, is this storage system full? Yes it is. Oh, I must have wasted so many resources. Yeah, look at that. All that loot's going to despawn. Oh well. Okay, so I think the best thing to do would probably grab one of these shulkers. Completely fill this shulker box with gunpowder. Okay, there we go. Right from that, let's head back to our starter area. Then let's collect all of our sugarcane. So if my math is correct, we need to turn nine stacks of sugarcane into paper. And then we combine this paper and gunpowder to make flight duration three rockets. Okay, not only was my math correct, we actually made more rockets than we need. Perfect. That is enough to do me for at least 500 days. What a perfect way to end our thousand day journey through Minecraft Hardcore. If you like that thousand day video, you should check out this one where we survived for 2000 days in Hardcore Minecraft.